with the recent release of Omega Strikers finally going from beta and actually being officially released. It is about time, especially with the time the game being out for about a week now, that we actually probably put together a tier list. I've been playing the game pretty much non-stop over the last week or so, and uh, kind of learning all the strikers and kind of seeing what's being played and how everything's being played. So I think it's right now it's time, a really great time to actually put his, but depending where you're seeing this as well, it might have changed and there might be a bunch of new strikers or a bunch of balance changes and whatever. So keep that in mind. Also going to be kind of for your solo queue, like beginner to like mid tier ranks. I don't know. I'm not a high tier player. And I think even like a tier list doesn't really even matter if you actually, until you get your higher tiers. But I do know people that actually want to see what's good and kind of have like an advantage of what to play and kind of what they should get good at and the stuff they kind of should be playing. And that's why a lot of people like this tier list. So a hundred percent opinionated. Don't take my, like my list as gospel because it's, like I said, it's hundred percent opinionated. If you guys not agree with me on something or if I ever get to mention something, let me know in the comments down below. But I think if you're just playing the like ranked, especially even like pubs, pubs don't matter, but like ranked, especially of like your lower to mid tiers, you can kind of play whatever. I think you can play every single striker in the game as long as you're good with them. You can rank up if you're good enough with them. It's just towards your higher tiers where you're going to want to be playing the better stuff, but I'm still going to do a tier list anyways, because why not? But apart from that, I'm going to get right into this. Um, I will leave timestamps probably in the description. I'm going to try to make this video as fast as possible, but as like explain in depth and talk about as much as possible as well so i don't know how long this video is going to be but if you guys like these videos leave a like and uh subscribe as well really appreciate it. i'll be doing a bunch more mega striker stuff on the on the future of the channel and i even stream the game as well so if you guys want to follow me on twitch i stream on youtube as well so subscribe when you so you don't miss when i'm live and that type of thing i also have a twitter if you guys want to go over there and follow me in a discord if you guys have a discord all in the description down below that being said, uh, I'm going to start out with Asher. I think Asher's, uh, she got her, her alt nerfed, like with this mini balance patch. They, they, I think they got the stun duration, and I think it was the cooldown got nerfed on it, I think. I think Asher is really, really solid. I, you can play her as goalie, like keep in mind with this list as well. I'm going to, I'm going to take into consideration, like all the roles for what they can actually play overall, not just for one specific role. So that's kind of what I'm basing this list off of. I know there's other people that will base certain strikers off of like one role they play extremely well, even though like the rest of them they don't play at all. Like go Some are really good at goalie and that's the only thing they're really good at. But I'm just going to kind of take it overall for like all the roles, like flex, forward, and goalie, or like that type of thing, so... Overall, I think Ash is A+. Plus. I think she's really solid. She's relatively easy to play. And I think if you want to play her, you play her either, either as like a, a flex or like a, a really aggressive forward that's constantly just trying to, to bully the enemy team because that's what she really does. But you can play her as a goalie. Her ult's still really, really good. She's able to make space pretty well. Nothing with her is really changed though especially with the nerves i don't still think she's going to be pretty good the nerves are kind of minor and like i said a lot of the nerves for the, the mini balance are kind of minor so they don't really i don't think they're gonna do like that much apart from like maybe one or two of them juliet is s tier I, I think juliet just going based off of like all the maps as well like taking that into consideration you can pretty much play her on any map in the game and pretty much with any team comp, and you can kind of just slap her onto a team comp, and I think she works with anything. She really does. I think she's one of the most consistent, like, strikers in the entire game, especially if you know how to play her. She's pretty easy to play as long as you know how to land your abilities. She's incredibly good. That's why she's S tier. I don't think it's because, I mean, once you get to your higher tiers, I have heard people that say she's really broken, but from what I've seen, yeah, she's really consistent. She's overall just really solid. She's always doing really well, and I think that's the main reason why. It's because you can just kind of play her whatever. You can even play her in goalie if you know what you're doing. She can just do everything really, really well. Especially being like a, uh, with like a, a team comp that has like a dive comp. You pair her with like an Estelle or like an X, and you just run at the enemy team and just bully the enemy team. She does that extremely well. 
at the same time. So it, it just depends on what team comp you want to run her with, but she can pretty much be paired with anything. It's really good. Estelle, I think, is really good. I think I'm going to put her in A plus tier. I think the the one role she does excel at is goalie. I think she's really, really good at goalie. Uh, especially with like the long range, whatever buff. I, I don't know the exact name for the buffs yet for, for the goalie items, but the one that gives you extra range or, or the blink one is really, really solid on her. She has a really short cooldown on her alt. Constant like long range poke damage. She's just overall really solid. You can even play her as like a flex or even like a forward, like a really aggressive like long range type striker. She's overall just really, really good. She takes a little bit more like dedication to play because you gotta land your abilities to actually like do something with her. She does have a skill shot with the long range. She has a teleport or like a blink, I guess. And then she has the alt, but if you can land your ability, she's she's really, really solid. Rune got a small buff. I think he's A tier. It comes down to kind of the player. I, I think if you're a better player, like if you're a great player, you can you can play him and he can do really, really well. He did get a small buff as well. I think it was to his, uh, I think it was to his knockback on one. I think it was his primary. He got a bit of a buff. Don't quote me on that because I'm not 100% sure, but... It got a small buff. It, whatever it was, I don't think it's really enough to really matter. At least from going based off of just looking on, on paper. I don't know if to see it played, but... Overall, I think he's just average. Nothing crazy. kind of comes down to the player. If you know how to play him, he's he's incredibly solid. Atlas, I think... They, they, they nerfed Atlas in this small balance patch as well. His primary got a... Uh, I think it's extra, I think, 0.5 or 1 second cooldown uh, increase. I think the problem with Atlas is he just moves way too slow. The only way you're picking Atlas is if you, like, build a team around him. He's great at supporting, like, a, an entire team. That That's the reason why you pick Atlas. If you're going to be playing him, you're going to be playing him as a goalie or, like, a flex. That's kind of more of a supportive type role. And if you want that, you're better off just picking, like, Era or something else. So, I would pick Era every single time over Atlas. I think he just moves way too slow. And if you want to play him, you got to play him as goalie. I think that's where he works best, but I, I'd put him at B tier. I don't think he's bad. If you're really good with him, you can make him work. And like I said, he, if you can make a team around him that he can support, he still is really good. But apart from that, I, I, I think he's one of the more like underwhelming characters in the game, at least just by himself. Zentaro is really good. As a really aggressive forward that is just constantly in the enemy team's face. If you know what you're doing and landing your abilities, he has a really crazy special as well. Like, if you get somebody low with a special and you got him, like, close to the edge of the map, you're pretty much guaranteed to get a KO every single time. And, and a, a plus one man advantage. Just really solid. Really difficult to lock him down, especially if you know what you're doing with him constantly just dashing around. Apart from that, though, I, I don't think he's higher than an A+. Plus, and that's... I'm putting him at A+, plus, just assuming you at least know how to play him, like, average or above. If you don't know what you're doing, he can probably be, like, one of the more, like, bad characters, because you, need, you do need to know how to play him. Ami, I'm putting A tier. I think Ami is one of the most balanced strikers in the entire game. She she is good on almost every single map, and I think she just does everything really well. You can play her as goalie, you can play her as more of a supportive type position, or, like, a, a really aggressive forward and do really well. I think she's overall, like, the most balanced and most, like, average, like, consistent character in the game. I think they want to balance more characters around her. I think she's one of the most balanced ones in the game. At least from what I've been seeing and, being, and playing so far, she's one of my most played strikers as well. Really solid. I wouldn't say she's better like an a, than A+, but I'm going to put her in A tier because I think she's really, really just average, but really consistent and still really good. X, I'm gonna put it A tier. More of comp dependent, but he is a really like a really aggressive bully that just bullies the enemy team. If you're look if you're a player that just loves to bully the enemy goalie or like the enemy team the entire game and just try to do that and just distract everybody, just cause chaos, then you then you wanna pick X. But if you wanna pair him with a team, I'd say he'd be better, but if you're just throwing him onto a random team, I'd say he's A tier. Overall, really solid, though, especially the ult. He's really annoying during the ult, just being able to knock people around and, and beat the shit out of everybody. Luna, I'm going to put a B tier. He, she got a slight buff. I think she got a 0.5 second buff on her uh, rocket dash or whatever it is. 
the reason why you're going to be picking Luna is just mainly the mainly for her abilities. Like her alt is incredibly good. You're going to be picking her for her special most of the time, and she's more map dependent and team dependent. If you want to build a team around her, she has a number of teams you can build around her. But just by herself, there's a lot better options, at least for me personally, at least what I think. Juno's really good. A plus tier. Especially in your lower to mid tier games. Pretty much what she does, she pretty much plays the game for you. Her slime, slime like blobs, they pretty much play the game for you. So you have a character that has a kit that pretty much plays the game for you. And then pretty much all you need to do is just take advantage of what, what your, your kit does. Really solid. I'm not going to talk about her very much more because she's a really straightforward striker. That's pretty easy to play overall. I think she would fall off towards your higher tiers of play, though. I think she's one of those type of strikers. But, like, to your lower, like, mid-tiers, I think she is incredibly good. Ramus. You know, this is more of, like, a skill, skill-based striker. I want to put him higher. I think he's A-tier. And that's just based off of, like, the maps that he's really good on. Like, you can put him higher. I think he's really good on Atlas Lab. And there's also the other map with the, uh, the black hole that's just in the entire map the entire time. I don't know what the exact ma name of it is. But there's two maps, like Atlas's lab, and there's another one that has a black hole that where he's just able to hook everybody and pull them in. Granted, most of his abilities are skill shots. He has a speed boost for, I think, like two or three seconds, which is really solid. His primary is solid, which I, I think also got a bit of a nerf with this mini balance patch, which I don't think it'll really affect it there very that much. But the main thing you're going to be picking him for is just for his hook and for his special. If you can get a constant kill on certain maps... I'd say he's band worthy even on some maps like Atlas's lab and the other the one with the other like the black hole and just getting kills that way but it is also a skill shot so if you don't know how to land your alt you're, you're never going to really be getting value out of it apart from maybe some damage so I'm going to put him A tier because he's mainly skill based if you're crazy good with him and especially on its good maps I put him in an S tier but just be for your like your average player I'd probably put him in an A tier because he is really skill dependent Kai, I'm going to put an A+. Plus. I think Kai is incredibly good. Kai is really, really good. He got a bit of a nerf to his ult. They decreased the range, and I think they increased the, the cooldown slightly on his ult for this mini balance patch, but I think he's still really good. I think if you want to play Kai, I think you play him as a goalie or as more of like a supportive mid-range type, type uh, role, at least for your team most times. I don't know. Overall, just really good, though. He's still really consistent. I'd probably put him in A-plus tier. But overall, really easy to play, too. His kit is really straightforward. You got a speed boost, and then you got two long-range abilities. An alt that's pretty spammable, and then you got another, like, medium to long-range ability. Dubu got buffed. I don't think he's S-tier. There's certain maps where I would actually say he's ban-worthy, like that... Just because you can... Your entire, like, body would actually, like, take up the entire, like, the... Pretty much the goal post or whatever the goal reset or whatever but like apart from that i don't know i'd probably put him in a plus tier just overall because i do think you can play him as goalie or even as more of a support like a really aggressive like forward type type role and i think he does all of them really really well he also got buffed his somersault got buffed so overall really solid it depends on what maps too like if he was on some of his really good maps where you can just block the goal like the goal things were before the, the goal or the goal unlocks. I don't know what you specifically call them. The goal unlocks, but like his, his entire body pretty much blocks some of them out on certain maps. So on those type of maps, he's either band worthy or like must pick worthy most times, especially as like a goalie. But just overall, I think he's A+. Plus. There's, there are certain times as well, like if you throw out your all, like I think the, the one thing that really separates like good and bad Dubu players are the ones that just randomly block their team with an alt. They're they they're over and trying to score, and then your duel will throw out an alt and just pretty much block off a huge line and just pretty much screw your team over from getting goals or like being able to keep the the core on the enemy side of the map and make plays off it. Uh, that's that's what kind of what separates good from bad players. But if you can at least keep your alt and actually get value out of your alt without screwing your team over. Then, then you'll you're, you'll be pretty much golden with him. Drakkar, I'm gonna put it at A tier. I think he's just really average. He has spammable primary. Yet the stealth is good. 
His ult is pretty good, but like apart from that, there's nothing about him that's overly crazy. I think if you do play him, you play him as more of like support or like a, a more of aggressive type forward, but I, I would not play him as a goalie. That's the only thing I would not play him, and I think he's pretty bad as a goalie. Apart from that, I'm not really going to talk about him very much because there just really isn't much more to talk about him. And last but not least, we got Era, which in this current mini patch, her alt actually got a 5 second nerf. So they increased all from 15 seconds, the, the Maelstrom, or Maelstrom, or whatever it's called, to, I think it was 15 up to 20 seconds now. But I still think she's S tier. I think she is probably one of the best, like, goalies or, like, supports in the entire game. I think she's... She works on almost every single map with almost every single team. The speed boost is crazy, especially if you have that buffed with certain awakenings. She has a really spammable, still going to be pretty spammable alt. They're also buffing one of the awakenings that she really likes that gives her extra alt charge and being able to have her alt at the start of every round. No matter what, if you use it or not, the cooldown gets reset. Or whatever the star awakening is, I forgot what it's actually called, but... I don't know all the awakening names off the top of my head yet. You guys gotta bear with me. But I know what they look like. The pictures of them look like, but I don't know like the actual names at least at this point. But I'll probably will in the, the future. But overall, I think she's really good. An, a similar thing is like Juliet, where you can kind of just pick her on any map and like with any team, and she kind of can just do anything. She's not really like an aggressive front, like a forward either. If you do play her as like a, a forward, you gotta play her as like more of a supportive forward that kind of just tries to make plays or buff her team, whether it's the goalie or the other forward you have on your team, whether they're mid or close range, whatever they may be, and kind of just buff them and kind of play off them. That's the main thing she really does. She is probably the king of making plays off your teammates, just with, with the abilities and type of things she has to offer. Being able to buff your teammates with make them larger or even like make the enemy smaller and make plays off that with her primary as well. It's really incredibly good. And she's also my most played striker up until this point. I think she's incredibly fun to play. And my most played goalie. If I play goalie, I'm playing Era. I, I, I don't think everything right now. And if I have to play something else, I'd probably play Estelle. But out of everything, I'd probably play Era, at least for goalie. I think she's one of the better like goalies in the entire game. But she can play anything. I don't know. This not really like a super aggressive forward because she just doesn't have the damage or the abilities to, to really do that. I don't know. That is your tier list, y'all, for the 2. Point, I think it's 2.0.2 .2 mini bet patch or whatever it is. Pretty much launch patch with the, with the small balance changes, number of small balance changes, which overall I don't think really matter. But let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Overall, at least for like your lower to mid tiers of play, I think the game is just incredibly balanced. I think there is not a, like a single like striker in the entire game that is legit like unplayable. Some are better than others. But like that just comes down to how well you play them as well. If you're good with something like Atlas or even like Luna, you can carry games, especially your lower to mid tiers of play. This is mainly to see like give people like the inclination of what's good and what's like what's the stuff that's better than the other stuff currently right now and what you should be playing if you really want to win the most. But even then, you can kind of just play anything, and if you're as long as you're good at it, you can probably win and rank up or win the majority of your pub games or whatever it may be. So birds, so. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. If there's anything I forgot or did not mention, let me know. I do apologize if it kind of feels like I was kind of everywhere. If I was kind of, I don't know, I wouldn't really say like explain stuff that in depth because I, like I said, I just started playing the game on launch as well. I've only been playing the game for a week. Granted, I've been playing a lot of the game for over the last week, but I don't know. These tier lists will get better. If this video does well, I'll do, keep on doing tier lists in the future for future patches. And hopefully these tier lists do get better as I learn the game more and I learn a lot of the, like the ability names and the, uh, the like the awakening names off the top of my head and all that type of stuff. So like right now, I don't know like a lot of the specific ability names. I know what they do, but I don't know like the exact like names off the top of my head. So I know all the striker names at least, but I don't know. Apart from that, I'm going to get out of here. Hopefully you guys enjoyed Leave you, feel free to leave your guys' own list in the comments down below. If I, I forgot to talk about anything or did not add anything, let me know. Like I said, Hunter. But apart from that, I'm going to get out of here. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you guys in a future video.